What up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Marie Shadows of the Square Circle Podcast. And on this episode of the Square Circle Podcast, I will be going over New Japan Pro Wrestling annual tournament of Best of the Super Juniors 29. I will be going over the whole entire thing starting from May 15th all the way until May 31st, which was the last day for everyone to try to get in their points because we already decided the final two that are going to be wrestling for that trophy on June 3rd, 2022. But first, it has definitely been a long time. I definitely missed you guys. I miss creating these standalone podcast episodes. So let me give you a bit of an update. At the beginning of May, I decided to make a Substack newsletter. So that way you guys can enjoy the countless content that I'm going to be putting on there. The reason why I switched from review to Substack is because my mental state grew in maturity. And I also like the fact that Substack has certain features that was beneficial to my content because my content is not just about writing. Sure, I have my degree in creative writing with my publishing certificate. You guys know this. So obviously, you know, I love to write. However, doing audio podcasts, live streams, it's a lot more quicker to get out my thoughts because I am talking and I feel comfortable doing that now. But Substack also gives me the ability to be in their video beta program. So when I do a live stream, I will be downloading that onto my laptop, cutting it up, editing it, and giving you guys the wrestling portion of it and if I do any type of gaming videos where I want to showcase that I'm playing with my subscribers all of that would be free content however you still get the video format and you get to watch it on the go you get to watch it directly in your inbox when you sign up via email and I just think that's way cooler so that way you guys always know and get the notification that hey Marie Shadows dropped a brand new newsletter it could be a podcast episode It could definitely be a video and you guys can watch it directly or listen to it directly in your email, which is, you know, your phone is always with you. You're always on the go. You're always on social media. So you always have that option there to go into your email and check out the new thing that I have been doing. So ever since I started a whole new Substack newsletter in like the beginning of May, I have a lot of content on there and all this content comes from the Kota Ibushi and New Japan situation. I have been covering that and I have been remaining neutral. You will get the black and white version of these articles directly to your inbox or you could definitely go into the archives uh, once you sign up. But yeah, the Kota Ibushi and New Japan situation, it's there for you to read. There has been nothing changed. I give you the facts. I give you the truth. That's all I do. I don't add any fluff like all the gatekeepers in the wrestling community does or do. I tell it like it is and that's about it. That's all you read. Aside from that, I also have my coverage of Best of the Super Juniors on my Substack, where basically I look at the top three matches you need to check out in each night of Best of the Super Juniors. I will be doing a lot more detail breakdown when it comes to these podcast episodes because you know how I love to break down wrestling matches and let you guys know why story is important so be on the lookout for that you guys will get individual standalone podcast episodes on each night of best of the super juniors and this is the first one this is may 15th all of those articles that i have about best of the super juniors they are all free to read i have also included some mow news which mow told us that lance and hawaii signed with MOW and he is part of the Samoan SWAT team. I have been really working my ass off to make sure that my Substack newsletter is the best thing for you guys to sign up and maybe get a paid subscription. By getting a paid subscription, you unlock wrestler interviews, you unlock the standalone podcast episodes, you unlock various wrestling articles, and you also unlock the chapters to my wrestling novel that I really do want to complete this year or by the beginning of next year, if it doesn't happen this year. So if you upgrade now, you're definitely taking off half off the price. So for one year, it is $70. Half off of that is $35 a year. That helps me out. That helps you out. Or if you want to do the monthly, which is $7 a month, that's great too. I know people don't like to hear about money 
and I totally get it, but I am here to try and negotiate and try to have a mutual understanding or grounding where both of us can win. You know, every time I mention money, people go quiet. And I am very surprised that the ladies of the internet wrestling community have redeemed their coupons to get the one year subscription at $35 and they pay one time and they get all the content I'm going to give them. So for future content, it's going to be more wrestler interviews, going to be more wrestling write-ups, more articles, more podcast episodes, Q&A, live streams, and, you know, just hanging out with friends who want to come on and stuff like that. Everything is a work in progress. And I appreciate everyone that has been supporting me ever since. And if you want to continue that support, that option is there. However, that coupon is only available until June 12th, right after New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. So get it now. The link will be in the description below. So visit my substack at marieshadows.substack.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling, Best of the Super Juniors 29. This is night one, May 15th, 2022. For this lineup, we have Block A. We had Clark Connors versus Ace Austin, Alex Zane versus Alex Zane versus Yoshinobu, Sho versus Akira Francesco. Taguchi versus Hiromu and Yo versus Ishimori. I am super happy that we got some new faces in New Japan Pro Wrestling for the best of the Super Juniors because it was such a breath of fresh air to see everybody there competing under the pressure that is best of the Super Juniors and to prove to the Japanese audience that they definitely belong in New Japan Pro Wrestling. If not in New Japan Pro Wrestling, then New Japan Strong. So I am very happy with the select group that they got for the first time out. Even though I do want to see more people, they should have had Chris Bay in Best of the Super Juniors. And they probably could have had some other people too. So as I go through Block A, let's talk about Clark Connors versus Ace Austin. This was a tremendous, a wonderful opening match for Best of the Super Juniors Block A. It was a little hard to pick on who I wanted to win I wanted Clark to win and I wanted Clark to go on to the finals and he would have been my pick. I have nothing against Ace Austin. He is a wonderful wrestler and a wonderful human being and a really great X Division champion. And he definitely showed out a lot during Best of the Super Juniors. He's definitely one of the best and he can compete with the best that Japan has to offer for the Super Junior division. And if anything happens, if Hiromu is like, I am done with Best of the Super Juniors, Ace Austin could definitely take over, and Ace Austin can definitely bring Best of the Super Juniors to a brand new height. El Desperado has already done that with the Super Juniors, so has Taiji Ishimori, but it will be nice to see what Ace Austin can do if he ever gets that position to bring the Super Juniors to a brand new height. Clark Connors and Ace Austin started off really, really well. Ace Austin uses his calling card to slice the webbing of Clark Connor's hands. This one was a powerhouse mixed with super junior ability that these two guys are going back and forth with. Clark definitely has the power. We get a back elbow from the top rope onto Ace. That was from Clark. Clark does a wonderful power slam. I love the power slam move. So that's a plus for me. However, Ace Austin was super crafty in his first opening match with Clark Connors. And I think that this is the first time that they competed against each other. But in the end, Ace Austin won with his finisher, the Fode, and gets the victory over Clark Connors. This gives Ace Austin his two points in Best of the Super Juniors. Our next match is Alex Zane versus Yoshinobu. Yoshinobu is from Suzuki-gun, for any new listeners out there. And Alex Zane is a wonderful wrestler from the indies. He has not yet been signed. And he has been a wonderful addition to New Japan Pro Wrestling and immersing himself in the Japanese culture. 
and trying all the food and putting it on social media. However, I did not like this match. And it had nothing to do with Alex Zane. It had everything to do with Yoshinobu. And I think that this was the wrong matchup for the beginning stages of Best of the Super Juniors. I think in the beginning when you do Best of the Super Juniors, the matches that they make should set the tone for the rest of the tournament going on. Even though I'm also not a fan of wrestlers exhausting all of their moves, but at least give us something to be invested in. So that way we know when Block A comes around in the next couple of days, I could definitely see the potential that the wrestler has and get behind them and be their cheerleader. But again, I just didn't like this match because of Yoshinobu. And I said in one of my articles over at marieshadows.substack.com that Yoshinobu doesn't really have to change much of his wrestling ability to accommodate someone like Alex Zane that goes from zero all the way to a thousand miles per hour. That's right. Alex Zane will be breaking the speed limit when it comes to his matches. So my first initial thought of this is that Yoshinobu, like I said, doesn't really have to change his wrestling ability to fit Alex Zane because he's so used to wrestling all of the older New Japan Pro Wrestling guys that are on the roster. So he could go at his own pace. He could be the slow, methodical technician that Yoshinobu is. And I think this really hurt Alex Zane in the beginning of Best of the Super Juniors Block A. However, the other matches that Alex Zane has was really great. And you could definitely see the improvement and his opponents comp and his opponents complimenting him. Now, yes, Yoshinobu here was keeping Alex Zane grounded because Yoshinobu doesn't really wrestle at that fast style unless he wants to, unless he really knows the wrestler. And obviously, this is the first time Alex Zane and Yoshinobu are fighting. So in the match, Alex Zane drops Yoshinobu with his double knees from the corner. We have a running senton leg drop, which looks amazing from Alex Zane. And this is on Yoshinobu. Yoshinobu breaks off the figure four leg lock onto Alex Zane to slow down the speed that Alex Zane has been giving him from the start of the match. Alex Zane does get to the ropes to cause a rope break. Alex Zane and Yoshinobu continue to fight a little bit longer until Alex Zane goes all the way to the top rope and does the sky twist to Yoshinobu. Alex Zane picks up the win over Yoshinobu, and this gives Alex Zane his first two points in Best of the Super Juniors 29, a block A. Our next match is rather interesting. We get Sho from House of Torture and in affiliation with Bullet Club versus Akira Francesco, the newest member to the United Empire which I'm excited about. I'm excited to watch Akira Francesco grow in New Japan Pro Wrestling, to grow in the United Empire, and just grow as a wrestler all around. Akira Francesco definitely comes into this match as a pure babyface. Sho is obviously the heel, but he is my adorable heel, as I keep saying. Sho does heelish things in a very adorable way and I can't get mad at him because I'm always interested to see what kind of dastardly things he could come up with and they are innovative and they're unique they're basically unique to his character they're not the same old tire things that you see House of Torture does when it comes to Dick Togo and Evil going out there and doing the same old heel tactics from the very beginning Sho has a different way of doing his heel tactics now, and it works. And I just think that it brings something fresh to the House of Torture. However, I do need Evil to step up his game if he's going to continue to lead House of Torture. Because if not, Sho is perfect to be on his own as a heel. Sho doesn't need House of Torture. Sho doesn't need Bullet Club. And I think he'll be okay by himself. But, you know, with those affiliations, it kind of helps a little bit more. And maybe he could stay there a little bit longer to become seasoned. But he's totally fine on his own with his antics of being an adorable heel, which 
not many people can definitely say or have the same feelings as me when it comes to show, but show has definitely improved. As for Kira Francesco, he is amazing in the ring. He goes by the nickname of Fireball or Nova Fireball. And just because I'm half Italian, I will butcher the Italian word for fire. So I will not be saying it. Just so you guys know. So this match was really, really good. Sho tries to jump Akira before the bell. However, Akira is very smart to this and manages to get some offense on Sho by doing a neckbreaker cutter to Sho. Akira then pushes Sho and keeping up with the pace with Sho. Akira is really going fast in this match and the longer that the match goes, it benefits Sho. Sho has a better stamina when it comes to certain matches in New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is the first time that Akira is wrestling for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Previously, before this, he was in All Japan Pro Wrestling, which is Tajiri's promotion, and Akira was their junior champion over there. During the match, Sho decides to use a young lion as a shield and as a distraction. The young lion is struck down and the referee goes and checks on him. Akira chases Sho around the ring. Sho gets into the ring and as Akira follows, Sho then takes the arm of Akira and pulls it over the top rope. Akira is in pain at this point and Sho decides to leg sweep him. So he's sitting on the ring apron and Sho goes and does a drop kick to Akira, sending him on the outside. Sho then manages to use a chair against Akira and Sho smartly does the distractions to the referee. And again, this is why sometimes New Japan fans think that Bullet Club and House of Torture has paid off all the referees to ignore the blatant signs of distractions and using the weapons and other things and not call a DQ. Akira does recover and he gets in some offense against Sho. He does a face first wheelbarrow to Sho. There is a blindside dropkick by Akira followed up by a corkscrew neckbreaker by Akira. Akira does go for the pin but Sho kicks out. And as Sho recovers, we get our first ref bump of this match. There always has to be either some distraction that goes wrong or a ref bump when it comes to House of Torture and Bullet Club. So, because we have a ref bump, Sho decides to go over to his shirt that has his wrench concealed under the shirt, and here comes CJP being so sly, and takes away Sho's main weapon of choice, which is a wrench, because he is nicknamed Murder Machine for Bullet Club and House of Torture, and Sho doesn't really know how to react. Sho doesn't like the fact that TJP took his weapon away. So this is where Akira takes advantage of this and does a fireplex onto Sho, which is basically a suplex. However, Sho does kick out. Then we get the last round, follow up by fireball and knees to the back of the head to Sho by Akira. Akira goes for the pin and gets one, two, three in his debut match against Sho here at Best of the Super Juniors 29 Block A. Akira beats Sho, which is kind of interesting and sort of a little bit unheard of because usually House of Torture members win, there's always more interference, but they gave Akira Francesco a really good showing and they paired him up with Sho, which was very good, and they allowed Akira to be Akira. By Akira having this win over Sho, that gives Akira his first two points. Our next match is Taguchi versus Hiromu. This one was comedy filled, very fun, very lighthearted. In the press conference for Best of the Super Juniors, Taguchi said that he was no longer going to be doing butt stuff. He was going to take things seriously. Well, that wasn't the case right in the beginning of this match where he tried to do a hip attack or a butt attack to Hiromu and Hiromu called him out on it 
And Taguchi felt embarrassed and bad, so he decided to lay down right in the middle of the ring and tried so hard to convince Hiromu to pin him. Hiromu wasn't buying it at first, but then once Taguchi tucked in his hands and crossed his feet, then Hiromu thought, oh, maybe this would be a good idea to do so. Hiromu then goes for the pin, and once the referee counts up to two, Taguchi quickly puts an ankle lock on Hiromu. Hiromu squirms his way to the ropes, gets a rope break, and on the outside is yelling at Taguchi as if it's not fair that Taguchi did so, that Taguchi was playing a trick on Hiromu. We then get a chase on the outside, and Taguchi went underneath the ring and disappeared, and Hiromu didn't know where he went. Taguchi then reappears, and the two managed to get into the ring, throwing some kicks, forearms, some punches. However, Taguchi, throughout this whole entire match, has been focusing on Hiromu's ankle. Hiromu is known to have some ankle problems, as well as other body part problems as well, too, but Taguchi focuses on the ankle and most of the time put Hiromu in ankle locks. Hiromu does a drop kick to Taguchi once he enters the ring. We get a face buster to Hiromu by Taguchi. But then we get a roll up, a crafty roll up by Hiromu. Hiromu rolls up Taguchi, gets the one, two, three. And that allows Hiromu to get his first two points in Best of the Super Junior Block A. Our next and final match for Best of the Super Juniors 29 Block A is Yo versus Taiji Ishimori. Taiji Ishimori is our IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion and part of Bullet Club and one half of Bullet Club's cutest tag team with El Fantasmo. Yo is still trying to find himself. He is currently wearing the oversized hoodie that your girlfriend will wear if you had that and you were a guy. That didn't come out as smooth as I hoped it would. But yeah, Yo has been completely wearing white and doesn't really show too much personality, not like Sho, and I'm not sure where his head is. But Yo doesn't really have that fire and Yo is basically, I don't want to say he's finding himself. He's not really finding himself, but he's a different type of wrestler. He's great inside the ring, but personality wise, it's like, man, show me a little bit more so that way I can cheer for you i could put you over on this podcast also i would like to give a shout out to clark connors when he did his promo for yo and he called him a pokemon bug catcher and i was just there like oh that's pretty interesting that's pretty clever pretty clever anyway we have taiji ishimori using the chair against yo's shoulder and the only way that this happened is taiji going over to the announcer table and getting the hammer that is used for the bell and the referee sees this so taiji throws it into the ring so that way the referee can be distracted go get the hammer for the ring bell and return it to the announcer table and thus taiji is able to hit yo with the chair and as yo is recovering during this match taiji ishimori does remove the corner pad exposing the turnbuckles Exposing the steel, we get an inverted dragon screw by Yo to Taiji Ishimori. And then Yo locks on an ankle lock to Ishimori. Yo quickly transitions that into a German suplex to Ishimori. And Yo has a hold on Ishimori. However, Ishimori breaks Yo's grip. And Ishimori does his face buster onto his knees to yo ishimori then locks in his submission yo has nowhere to go so yo taps and this awards taiji ishimori his first two points in best of the super juniors 29 block a all right ladies and gentlemen that is all from me for reviewing night one of best of the super juniors 29 block a we have a lot more to go in this podcast series for new japan pro wrestling best of the super juniors i really hope you enjoy this if you enjoy this then please you know what to do but i'm going to remind you all what it is then please go follow me on social media such as twitter at marie underscore shadows 
I always welcome new faces and I love talking about wrestling. Support me over on Substack. Get all of my newsletters directly to your inbox. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about missing a notification. It's right on your phone. You take it with you on the go. You can listen to this podcast directly from your inbox. And you can definitely watch the videos directly from your inbox. I really want to get away from YouTube. That is why I decided to rejoin Substack and get into their video program so I can get away from YouTube. This Substack newsletter is our community where we get to immerse ourselves in professional wrestling. And I try to make professional wrestling a little bit better than it was yesterday. So please make sure that you are signed up at marieshadows.substack.com. You can go for the free version, which is totally okay. But the paid version will definitely unlock a lot more goodies and you'll be a lot more happier and proud to be a member of marieshadows.substack.com. As always, follow me on Twitch. I will be having a lot more live streams on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows. I am an affiliate on Twitch, so you can also subscribe there. It's up to you. I like giving you guys options. Of course, I still have my coffee Kofi page open. So that's www.ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows. You're more than welcome to leave a tip there if you want to. All these are options. So marieshadows.substack.com, twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows, www.ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows. And of course, on Twitter at Marie underscore shadows. As always, this podcast episode will be on the Substack, but also on Anchor. So anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast. You can also leave a tip there too. There is listener support. So again, any which way you want to support, I really highly thank you guys for listening to my wrestling takes, talking with me, whether it's on Twitter, Discord, even on Substack, anywhere you find me, I appreciate our conversations. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and I get to see you down the line and we get to talk and have some fun. There will be more New Japan coverage coming out on Substack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to an episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows, and I'll see you guys on the next one.